You are now listening to Out of the Blank. Welcome to uh, another episode of Out of the Blank Podcast. I'm here with Jeremy Burke. Is that how you say your last name? Uh, Brink. Brink. Yeah. Ah, God, messing up already in the Robbie. beginning. Robbie. Sorry. I forgive you. Well, so Jeremy, what do you... Uh, it depends what time of the day. Um, so, I own a couple of restaurants and a coffee shop by day and uh, play music at night. Oh, so, you, owning, the, owning the restaurants and coffee shops. So, tell me about some of the ones that you're involved in. Uh, so, I own a place called Ocean 13. We have a seafood and steakhouse. We have a bistro and tiki bar. And we just opened a coffee shop this year. And uh, do, you, do you like the whole business aspect of owning, kind of running a business? Oh, absolutely. I, mean, I love it. I've had a lot of friends that work in the restaurant industry that from like dishwashers and like waiters and waitresses. And they say that like they kind of want to dive into doing their own like depths of the, the restaurant business as well. Kind of the, with Ocean 13, what's the kind of vibe you were trying to set off into it? Obviously a sea vibe, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely a lot of ocean stuff. Um, you know, we do a lot of stuff, the uh, whole strawless summers. And we, we changed from styrofoam even before the, the whole band started coming out. And um, obviously... Without the oceans, you know, we don't really have anything on this earth. You know, it's yeah. Kind of sustains life. Um, so, but, you know, as far as the vibe goes, you know, we uh, laid back. We uh, we want to put out great food in a casual atmosphere, you know, kind of place you can come and relax and hang out and have a good time. But you don't have to feel no, stuffy. It was funny. I was like, where's Ocean 13 at? And my mom's like, uh, 13th Street. I was like, OK, well, is it Bay or Oceanside? She goes ocean 13 i'm like oh okay all right, all right that makes sense it gives like the direct location of it yep we, the, you can't get confused so you're talking about uh preserving the oceans and stuff like that like because that is a you know 90 percent of the earth is made of water so or 75 percent, i think yeah but it's like there's a lot of new inventions coming out that are actually pretty beneficial to like cleaning up uh the uh, p- pollution and stuff in the ocean and stuff with the uh, trash bag things the little little circular things that catch trash bags float right into it and the little uh the now bottle of containers, the six ring packs, are being uh, being able to be biodegradable. So yeah, they're actually uh, there's a beer company that are making them into fish food. Isn't that so, nuts? So if it ends up in the ocean, uh, fish actually get to eat. Because I mean, how, I mean, out of you know, when you see a wrapper floating around in the ocean or something, you can pick it up. But there's going to be so much trash and just so much stuff oh, already yeah, in there's... it. It's like even doing the smallest part seems like it's never enough. And having these systems in place, they, I mean, they literally have an island of trash out in the middle of the ocean somewhere. Yep, out in the middle of the Pacific. There's there's actually a huge area. Um, I mean, it's it's just crazy and. Uh, unfortunately we as human beings, um, pollute. we, we pollute and we use a lot of things and, you know, for our everyday life just to happen, you're talking about piles of pollution per person per day, uh, piles of trash, you know, CO2 emissions, all kinds of stuff. It's I think actually kind of crazy. The one thing I even pollute most on is just toilet paper. Yeah. I go through a lot of toilet paper. No doubt. And my bathroom breaks all the time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it'll happen yeah well uh it's it's crazy to think that like there's there's this first of all this natural resource that we have on this earth that is very very like beneficial to us i mean we we wouldn't be here without it like without any sustainable life to be anywhere there has to be water and with the fact that we don't really take care of it but the fact that you can create a restaurant that you know i eat everything from the sea so it's like everything out of the sea could be a shark's butthole it doesn't matter it's delicious and it's funny because my dad doesn't like seafood at all except crabs and like you know some shrimps and stuff but he hates fish doesn't does doesn't like the water but he moves to ocean city and he was like i don't like sharks i don't like the whole water thing i just don't i can't do it and it's like, okay, it's like, that's weird to think of. It's ironic how someone could be so like, just not like the ocean, but still enjoy going out and smelling the air of it. Oh, like, absolutely. Especially when you're right on the water in here with your restaurant, like the first thing that people get in the morning, it's why a lot of hotels are on the water. You get that nice smell of air, that salt air or something. Oh yeah. And it, you know, it cl- cl- cleans everything. You know, Hawaii, it's better to walk around and live there just because like, if you have asthma, you can breathe without having an inhaler. Like that's, it's, it's crazy to think how like there's so many things in this world that just come down to like, it boggles my mind about how amazing some things are. Oh, for sure. I actually, I went on vacation, uh, to Hawaii a year ago and, uh, we're actually planning to go back this, uh, January coming up. Uh, it's, it's amazing. I lived there when I was a kid, 
but I didn't remember the smell. Like, somehow I forgot that. But when you walk around in Hawaii, have you been there? Yeah. Okay, it, it, it smells like fruit. It smells fresh. It yeah. smells, it's the best smelling air I've ever breathed a in my life. A lot of homeless people in Hawaii. And I think that's just the choice. They choose to be like that because they can just, all of them, like everywhere, it's just the lawn. It's just, it's, it's, some of, surprisingly, there's a lot of natural stuff, but there's a lot of artificial stuff too. Like the hotels, they had penguins at this one hotel. I was like, what is going on? Oh, wow. We're in Hawaii. <laughs> and they have the little, little, little puffin penguins. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. It's like in a little exhibit. And I'm like, they're feeding them fish. And it's like, you get all this exotic koi fish. I, I was fascinated by koi fish. I got great pictures swimming with sea turtles. Yeah. I know there was the thing called the wall. My cousins are actually from Hawaii. So it's oh, like, nice. Okay. They grew up, they speak pigeon, which is like, half American, half Hawaiian. So like their words are cut like in a bonnet. So it's like really kind of difficult to understand what they were saying. No doubt. But um, have you eaten the fast food down there? Uh, Yeah, yeah. I, the McDonald's? I ate all, yeah, I, I think I got spam from from McDonald's. Okay, best thing, <laughs> spam asubi. You know what I'm talking about? Is that the... The, the little rice thing yes. with the spam on top? Yep. The gas station yep. thing? The, the, the Dude, sushi. those were the hot pockets of the world yep. down there. I no, love those For things. two bucks, you get something that's like a half pound of rice and spam. It's amazing. It's a it's a little pocket snack, man. We talk about, like, that would be the comp, like those little pizza or pretzel combos here. That's the spam asubi down yeah, over there. Yeah, so actually right now in, in my tiki bar, uh, we're bringing in Pog. You know Pog? The juice that's all over Hawaii? Yeah. We'll be like the only people... You know, that I know of close to here. So you don't ever hear of anybody bringing in Pog. So we're going to have Pog in the team. What about Poi? Uh, who's Poi? It's that white, like, mayonnaise type stuff they put on everything. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what makes yep, the island yep. people so big. It's because it's like a lard. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. it's literally yep. a lard. They feed it to babies and stuff. Like, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Like, I had it on a little bit of a McDonald's cheeseburger. I almost threw up because I hate mayonnaise. I hate all that stuff. Yeah, so I'm, like, I'm not big on mayonnaise. It so was so <laughs> thick. It was like, oh, what did you guys just give me a scoop of lard in my mouth? He's like, it's good. And he's like, these guys are dumping it on everything. Yeah, he's no, like, that's, I, that's that's why I was like, boy, huh? Yeah, because I don't uh, mayonnaise is not my thing. So if it looks or tastes or smells like mayonnaise, it's it's not for me. You try and create that vibe with the restaurant. You try to create a Hawaiian type vibe here um, of a beach well, ocean city. Vibe. Well, with the with the tiki bar, definitely. Like it's it's um, we're actually rebranding it the Leaky Tiki. I mean, this building is eighty years old or however old it is. Uh, so you know, we have an open air bar as a tiki bar, and uh, so there's spots in there where it leaks. You know, um, nothing we can do about it. So it's going to be the Leaky Tiki from now on. But we're definitely we're switching it into a a, a rum bar. So we're going to have all kinds of rums from, you know, around different regions and stuff. And uh, it's just going to be just really cool. You'll be able to come here and have tropical drinks that are actually made. Like I said, we're bringing in Pog and we're going to have the guava juice and all that kind of stuff that, that really lets you come in and get a nice hawaiian punch so to speak you know all kinds of really great things you probably have a really tough time with flooding too because you guys are like some have, some of the building have to step down and go into what's like a basement level type thing to get to the restaurant and the ocean's right there when that comes up uh, you know you know ocean city floods like crazy when it oh, rains yeah. so much you guys probably i saw the sandbags when i was walking in here i was oh, like yeah. <laughs> you know they're piling that up in front of the door before storm or something and yeah like, and honestly uh the cool thing is we got some pumps all at the bottom so it'll as soon as it starts to flood it drains out That's so it's good. not not yeah. too terrible you know knock on wood <laughs> now that i said that we're gonna get flooded but no it hasn't been too bad um this is our third year here and uh uh, we've definitely got some water in the restaurant a few times, but nothing that the sump pump couldn't keep up with. So what, what's some of the, um, kind of duties you do around here? Like stuff uh, you have to handle on a day to day basis. Oh, uh, I know man. you do DJing at night and stuff too here, which has gotta be fun. You know, you get to work in your restaurant and doing a whole nother side of it, seeing the night show. Oh yeah, crew of absolutely. It. Um, well, when you own a restaurant, you'll, uh, you do everything. You learn things that you never thought you'd have to do. You know, uh, Whatever has to I go. do landscaping. I wash dishes for at least an hour a day. You know, uh, you know, you, you literally do everything. I'm cleaning bathrooms. I'm taking out trash. Uh, the glorious life of restaurant ownership is that you get to do everything, everything that nobody else wants to do. <laughs> and yeah it's got to get done somehow yeah so. absolutely but you know when you when you love your industry when you love what you're doing you don't care you know you go in like oh great you know somebody missed the toilet well you know 
nobody else is going to clean it, so you do it. Fuck it, right? So that's restaurant ownership. It's glorious. Well, that's got to be a good thing because that really shows, first of all, as an owner, you can tell when an owner neglects his business. When an owner doesn't care about the restaurant, doesn't put any effort into improving it, you know, he just starts spending, you know, he's always off vacationing somewhere, never checks on his business, never calls oh, yeah. in. First of all, <clears throat> staff gets lazy. Yep. Staff gets like kind of like a bad vibe. But you got to be open with your people. You got to make sure you're working with friends. You create a nice working environment. You interact with the people. Absolutely. I think we've all been to a certain place or restaurant. Like there's that mom and pops place down. Um, like if you're going down to Selbyville, it's that old black barbecue place. You always smell their, them cooking an old barbecue or something like that. I stop there instead of Smoker's Pit. Because the woman feeds me like it, I'm one of her family. She gives me like, well, you want some cornbread? You want some? It just starts feeding me. I'm like, yes, I love this. It makes it treat like a really nice home vibe. She doesn't make me feel like, you know, just because she's a different color than me. She makes me feel at home. It doesn't matter. You know, we're people. That's all we are in this world. A lot oh, of people absolutely. are totally neglected to that. You know, certain businesses won't serve a certain people sometimes like there's those types of things we see that type of racism and this type of stuff it's like you can't be like that if you want to be a successful restaurant owner you think yeah, Gordon no, I... Ramsay got to his spot by you know be being a master chef and doing everything because he hated some certain yeah, well, types of if food. you don't if you don't love all people and you don't love taking care of all people and you can't be brothers and sisters with all people regardless of all of that you don't belong in the restaurant industry and honestly you don't belong in 2019 <laughs> It's, it's really hard because, I mean, a lot of times we say people are sensitive in today's society. I do believe. I believe a lot of people are walking around here with a disguise on their face. I mean, they're they're not showing them true selves. You know what I mean? It's because we're so afraid someone else is going to judge us. But I'm, I'm just thinking, like, everyone's got a story. You know, I told you about my podcast before it was a podcast. I told you I wanted to yeah. have you on when you got a chance. We finally got it lined up. It's been, it might have been a little while, but, you know, it's, it's finally taken, like, hold here and we're getting this this is getting written in the books man and I, I i just see like i noticed like everyone asked me you're 21 years old why are you going around doing this thing trying to interview people it's like i'm not interviewing anybody it's a conversation between you and me you can i'm looking at you the whole time you know you can I, obviously the recorder's there you're gonna obviously look at it and stuff and you know check yeah. on it and everything <laughs> but it's like I'm just talking to you. I don't, I'm don't. i not worried about what anybody else is out there looking to hear. Everything I want to ask you is everything I want to know about you. From what I've known from you, going to the gym and working out with your friend that I think works here too. Yeah, uh, he's actually uh, my business partner. Yeah, so yeah. it's like I didn't even know you had a restaurant, man. I, just, I remember playing a gig with my brother's band one night and you guys were up right behind us. Yep. And, um, you know, it, it was... It was just nuts to think that was like my first gig, my best moment. I remember you kept telling me, dude, you killed it. You killed it. You killed it. And I was like, dude, I know I messed up. I know I messed up. I was so nervous up there. I was like, it was awful. It was awful. That was all in my head. But you were giving me such good confidence and everything. You're like, dude, it's not as bad as you think. You're being more of a critic to yourself. Oh, we're all our own worst critic. Or you should be. Because if yeah. you're not your own worst critic, how are you going to grow? Well, first of all, when if you think you're perfect 24-7, you're not going to want to make improvements. Yep, and you, you can't grow. Improvements. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And like when you're when you're creating a home restaurant vibe type feeling with your restaurant, you want to be able to like the fact that you can go and sit down and be able to sit with a customer and like talk to them, be able to like shoot the shit and being able to actually relate to them and create a personal vibe. Like you guys good yep. or anything? That's a big, big step, man. We talk about owners neglecting other businesses and stuff. That's how a lot of businesses down here fall out or become too mainstream. You see, you see the founder of McDonald's coming up to everybody and. <laughs> sitting down there having a nice happy meal with their with the kid i'm sure at first they did there's there's no doubt you don't get that big without doing something right um but you know my thing is no matter you know i could have 10 restaurants 15 now it wouldn't matter i would still want to go around and talk to my customers and you know I'd, I'd even rather talk to the ones that could possibly have something negative to say because how else am i going to know what turned you off what what made you say Oh man, I love that crab soup, but uh, you know that that taco maybe wasn't seasoned quite enough, or or you know anything like that. Because that that lets me go and say, all right, guys, let's make this a better taco. Let's make this the best taco, or whatever the situation may be. I I am definitely one of the owners that I, I like to go around to the tables. I check on people. Like the tables see me busting tables, and then I go over and talk to them, ask them how their night is, and I think they get a little confused, like. 
why is the bus boy talking to us? But, you know, it's because I, I don't mind doing every single part of the restaurant industry. I love this industry. I've been in it since I was 14 years old. It's all I've done my entire life. Um, I, I co-owned a marketing company with my ex for, for several years. Um, and even that, I did most of the restaurants. I, that's what my niche was. Um, so, you know, even the entertainment side of things. I mean, I'm not... Uh, we have done big festivals as a band, but for the most part, we're in restaurants. Uh, so everything that I've done my entire life has been focused around this industry. I mean, I've done everything from bartend to dishwash to bus, and now I get to do all of it at my own place. What's your favorite part about at all the restaurant sides you've kind of dipped into? Which one's the one side you like the most? Uh, I love waiting tables. I don't do it anymore, really? but I love waiting tables. It lets me meet new people, lets me talk to them. Uh, you know, I'm a talker. I, I definitely am. I, yeah. I'm, I'm reserved if I don't, you'd say you and I walked up to each other and, and like you said, like you knew I was in a band, but you had no idea I owned this. So I'm, I'm kind of reserved, but when you get to know me, I don't ever shut up like ever. I'm like that too. Yeah. Man. And, and, but when I walk up to a table, like I go into it, like I've known them forever and I'm going to sit there and talk yeah, and, same. you know, you know, my bank account depends on that, you know, back in the day when that's what I did as a job. Uh, so the more that you can connect with your table, the more inclined they are to say, wow, you know, uh, that server just really made my day better. And so, you know, they're going to give you a couple extra bucks and that's not the only reason I did it, but it helps, you know, but yeah. being able to go actually have a conversation and talk to people and, you know, people are, people want to learn, people want to ask, Oh, what, what should I do in this town? And that's when you get to, to plug the, Oh, you know, make sure you listen to ocean 98 so you can find out when this is going on or, or make sure you, you swing by you know you want all you can eat um crabs go to crab alley you know you, you just that that's what what well, i still do when you i talk to table advice and tips i used to do me and a jet ski guy people would ask the best place to get yeah crabs. See, same thing like we should go to hoopers because we work right behind hoopers i was like don't go to hoopers you want to go to this certain place or this certain local area kind yep. of because that'll give you better crabs like yep. not and, someone that's so mainstream like hoopers it's a good place to go in but hey, when it's packed dude no, it's not. You're getting crappy crabs, man. I work behind that place. It smells like ass every time. Oh. Because that dock, <laughs> that marsh smell. Oh, my. Dude, that, you smell that marsh in the morning? You ever smell marsh? Oh, uh, yeah. It's the worst smell in the world, man. You're waking <laughs> up to that. It's ridiculous. And it's like you give people some secret advice or secret tips. It's like, you know, if you do this, you know, it's a secret way to work around the menu. My buddy works at Chick-fil-A, taught me their secret menu items. You can get a, a, a root beer cream float, all these different types of things. That, you, know, you could order off the menu. He goes, yeah, yeah, I didn't know that either. Exactly. It sounds awesome. And it's like that makes you feel like you're in on it. You're in on the program. If you have like a secret, you should have a secret menu here, a secret little seafood thing. That you can let a certain couple customers know and let you, you know, let the staff know it's there. And if the customer asks for it, like, damn, and it, it makes them feel like, holy crap, it's not on the menu, but I got it, you know? Oh, absolutely. Instead of being like, hey, let me get some chicken tenders and french fries, because everybody serves chicken tenders and french fries, even if it's not on the menu. Yeah. But it's like, if you have something that's a weird, like, seafood dish that might you might have created or something, and you have that not on the menu, and then you just let a couple people know, eventually it's going to spread to their friends and their friends. Eventually no. it's going to get ordered down the road, and that might create a good little vibe down the road. Absolutely. Yeah, the one thing that we're, we're known for, it is on the menu, but people come in because they heard of it. Uh, upstairs in the whiskey bar in uh, the Seafood and Steakhouse, uh, we have a chai old fashion. So it's uh, literally the best drink I've ever had, and nobody around here is, is doing it. Uh, my buddy Tim... Uh, moved down here. He's a, a mixologist in New York City, and he came down here last year, and he opened with us um, upstairs, and he brought this drink with him, and uh, it's just the most ridiculous thing you'll ever have. It's a uh, uh, homemade honey reduction. It's got Jack Rye, which I didn't even know Jack Daniels made a rye. I thought Jack was Jack, but come to find out, there's 200 different kinds of Jack Daniels. I had no idea. So you get into owning a whiskey bar, then you're like, oh gosh, there's a lot more Jack Daniels. Um, got fresh orange twists in it and it's literally the best thing that i've ever drank in my life uh and people come in they're like hey you know what's up with this chai thing i keep hearing about um so it's not a secret menu item but it's it's definitely along the same lines you know you want people you want some kind of buzz you know secrets has the pain in the ass you go to secrets as a tourist you've already heard about the pain in the ass 900 times before you show up not just talking about the people there they're talking about the <laughs> pain in the ass to drink 
it's, uh, see, it's, it's crazy because you say mixologist. I'm like, who goes to college for a mixology degree or something like that? But it's like, I honestly, that's not what it is. But, you know, it's like the whole idea of the philosophy. Like, it's like getting your uh, uh, bachelor's. In, uh, yeah, well, I mean, there are actual psychology. classes. I mean, yeah. there, there's, there's, you know, being, there, so there's, there's a difference between a, a cook and a chef. There's a difference between a bartender and a mixologist. Mm-hmm. You know, bartenders. Some of my best friends are, are, are bartenders and they're amazing people. They can do things that, uh, you know, even when I was a bartender, I look at some of the bartenders now and I'm like, I don't know how you keep up with that, man. Like, like eight deep and you're just rolling through it. Like back when I was a bartender, I wanted to talk to people because, yeah. you, know, you know, that's what I do. Um, but so there's nothing wrong with either one being a cook or a chef. There's nothing wrong. There's, you know, but it's, it's a level of how much do you know? So a mixologist and a bartender, the mixologist, actually studied why these drinks work together, why this certain, yeah. you know, acidic thing should go with this certain, you know, rye whiskey or the flavor you know. combination. Too. Exactly. Yeah, the flavor, and uh, the, first of all, to have a good beer, I think the flavor profiles have to match up. If you're gonna do a mixing drink, you gotta have you know you don't we're not gonna put Irish cream coffee with like fireball. Yeah, you don't want to do that or something or the, the actually that might be okay because the cinnamon and the cream might actually work. Well, I mean, like you want to honestly, you want to get messed up, but it, you want, when you, someone's going out to pay and they're trying to get like a good drink, they want to get something that's going to taste good too. Oh yeah, the whole part of having a beer. I mean, if you're getting natural light, you're literally just getting it to get messed up. Like, but if you go to an actual like beer and get an IPA or get something, you're looking for a specific flavor. You're looking for something that's going to like it's like going to the store and getting a, a type of like sparkling water or whatever you want to get, like a type of soda. You're you, you're looking for a flavor. You have taste in your mind right now you're trying to accomplish here and i think you've accomplished your taste of really getting a, a sense of a restaurant dude i mean i'm in love with the logo i want to buy a cup just so i can have that logo in there because i i didn't even know that was your restaurant when i was walk. i see it every day in the gym it's that giant <laughs> banner hanging above there you got an ice cream thing up top man which is it sucks i'm lactose sensitive so i can't have ice cream unless everyone in the room's gonna die from it no <laughs> but you know it's it's crazy to think like how many aspects you can form into your restaurant how you can go to having a seafood to a, something else that someone else might enjoy if they're not into seafood they're coming to the beach and a lot of times it's hard to think that no one enjoys like if you're coming to the beach you obviously want seafood you're obviously know you're getting seafood but there's other options to have. It's not just the seafood strict menu. Oh yeah, no, no. We we have vegetarian. We got some vegan options. Um, I mean, we we try to when when we decided to, to take over the upstairs along with down here, and we decided what we did we're going to do up there with seafood and steakhouse. What we said to ourselves, we want to hit the the full gamut. We want the needs you know of any anybody walking down this boardwalk could come to Ocean Thirteen, and whether you want tacos or or you know custom made flatbreads. Or you want a three-pound steak in front of you. We wanted to be able to, to serve anybody that's on this boardwalk. And we welcome everybody, you know, like, come off the beach. Like, you know, you just got done. You're in your board shorts. You throw a shirt on and come inside. You know, we're, we're very inviting. We want people to just come and have good food is is all we care about. We want people to have good food. And that's good because if you serve vegan food, I can finally find a place to take my buddy because he's vegan. And it's like every time we go to a restaurant, he can't have something that is cooked next to if it's cooked. Like, we can't go to Outback. He's like, is, can I have a salad? They're like, yeah, you want like meat sauce on top? He goes, no, can I just get a salad? And they're like, well, it's cooked next to the kitchen where those burgers are being fried. And he's like, all right, can we just like, I'll just have water. It's all I'll have. And he goes, oh, yeah, the water was dipped with a type of animal. Like, it's like, <laughs> oh, my God, you can't have anything. It's just so difficult to take him anywhere to have anything. But, I mean, if that's his interest and that's his aspect, I don't knock down on that. But the one thing I want to ask you is, is your passion this restaurant business? Because it seems like you have a lot of passions, even with music. But you say life has been the restaurant business. So what's... Mm-hmm. Where does that come from? Where did you pick up that inspiration? Just, you know, when I first job ever was uh, Paisano's on the boardwalk downtown. So I went in there and I was just amazed by everything. And even when I was little, you know, it was uh, my dad was in the army. So we didn't have a whole lot of money growing up. We had, you know, they had four kids and on a military budget. Um, so when we got to go out to restaurants, it was a big deal. It was cool. We got to actually go experience a family thing. And so when you're little and going to a restaurant is like your, your prize, you yeah. fall in love with the yeah. restaurant industry. Like the toy in the cereal box. Yeah, I mm-hmm. Pretty much. So that, that's where it came from. You know, when, when I was five, six years old, I was already talking about, man, I want to have a restaurant one day. And then I, I always talked about it. 
And, uh, you know, my business partner, Steve and I started looking several years ago and, uh, you know, we found this place and pulled the trigger. And here we are. Do you think that that all came like how you try and create a family aspect in your restaurant? It's all from the family aspect you kind of received with eating oh, you know, with your family. Absolutely. absolutely. I mean, those were the best moments, man. I mean, I remember my dad, he used to get certificates from, because he worked doing the radio station, he used to yeah. get certificates to all these different restaurants and businesses, and we would always go out to eat when I was little, and then eventually it just kind of stopped, but like, I still remember some of the, movie, like the, the paintings, when I think it was either at the bonfire or some type of place, like buffet style, that, somewhere that had crab legs, my dad was getting crab legs, I mean, trying to bring a home vibe to people, because it's just like a hotel, when you're going away, you also don't want to feel like you're being totally secluded away from you know, your home, you still want to feel at home, you know, you, you just want to feel like you actually left the house, but you want to feel like, you know, you can still get the comfortability of being at home somewhere else. Oh, for sure. So when you go to a restaurant, you want to be comfortable. You want to feel like you're sitting down and actually being able to spend time with your family or the people you're trying to connect with. Like yep. if you're going out for a social event, you know, you don't, you're not sitting there. No one's, it seems like now everybody's on their phones, but if you can create a restaurant that can create a good vibe and kind of create a lasting impression for that kid. There's going to be a little kid there that's sitting there doing coloring and he's going to want to have like I remember all the personal talks we had at the dinner table. That's the one thing I wanted to start bringing my podcast recorder in on uh, sitting in the middle of a restaurant while just eating burgers. Yeah. Getting that whole conversation because it's like having a conversation at a bonfire at two in the morning. You say some stuff that creates like bonds with people and these moments with people like mm -hmm. one of my buddies who opened up to me like about his life and everything and about how much I'm like a brother to him. He had to be drunk to experience it. But the whole fact, like, I, I've never seen that side of him before. It's not something, but I remember all of our stupid conversations. I remember going to Ponzetti's, getting a, a cheesesteak sub with lettuce on it. That used to be my kick back in the day. And, and Wawa Fest would do that, Hoagie Fest. Mm -hmm. And um, my buddy was like, I'll just order the same thing he's ordered. And then my other buddy's like, I'll just order the same thing he was ordering. And then my other buddy's like, I'll just order the same thing. So we all got four, got the same thing. I'm like, y'all just lazy, don't want to pick off the menu. <laughs> they had a clear sword toothpick in the sub i bit into the sub and it stabbed the top and bottom of my mouth oh. yeah i didn't see it and it, it hurt so bad but all of us were looking at it and i look back at it now and i was laughing because like that's a funny moment we all experienced my dumb ass basically ate a, 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 yeah. a, a, a sandwich <laughs> toothpick but it's like those those moments like there's something about that restaurant every time i go by it now i think of that moment i think of how funny that was yep. i think that we just got done from the beach we were soaking wet and we literally went to Sensations, bought a couple $2 t-shirts because we had nothing else to wear and had to walk into this restaurant because they wouldn't serve us without t-shirts. So it's like, <laughs> it's it's that whole aspect of like it creating a, an impressionable moment on what whatever age you are. If you make it a good or fun experience or just something random that happens. I mean, how many times have you tried to make it to a gig and the gig, like car broke down or something or some, make it to a job and then your car broke down and next thing you know, it's like the worst story ever. But then you think about it later. And it's like you look back and laugh on it because that was an experience, whether it was a good one or a bad one, it was one that you formed. And Absolutely. You're creating that with a restaurant and you're putting it out there. So the fact that you instilled that from when you were like a child, just visiting restaurants with your family and then trying to incorporate that into your business now. I see that as like a major, I mean, I applaud to you, man, because that's something that a lot of people just totally lose grasp of. Hopefully you don't lose grasp of that. That's yeah, no, I, and I, I don't think I ever will. You know, my, my son is homeschooled. And he comes in and actually helps around the restaurant. He's super excited about it. So, you know, he's developing a love for it just like I did, you know. Um, and like I said, my dad was in the military. So growing up, you know, we, we didn't have a whole lot of money. So, you know, I'm not in the military. I've never you know, been in the military. I went straight into to work. I went to college for a few years and then went straight into to working, keeping working at restaurants and all that kind of stuff. So um, my son's been around restaurants is, you know, we go out to eat several nights a week around Ocean City. And when we go on vacation, that's our big thing is we want to try the local food around wherever we vacation. So when we go on vacation, we don't, you don't pack a whole bunch of food to eat at the hotel. We, we want to experience what, there is offering. We don't go to, you know, if we go on vacation, we don't go to Outback. Not that there's anything wrong with Outback. You know, I've eaten at Outback thousands of times in my life. Yeah. But we want to go to where it's a local and different vibe and something I can't get at home. So what I'm trying to do with Ocean 13 is give people somewhere that they can say, oh, every time I go to Ocean City, I have to go to Ocean 13 because I can't get this 
back yeah. home. I can't get this anywhere else. This is an Ocean 13 thing. You're not trying to structure it like a McDonald's where you can get it anywhere. You're trying yeah, to structure it, it like you, when yep. you come to Ocean City, this is what you can get here. You yep. can get something and, like this. And we definitely, I mean, obviously we could make more profit just doing a normal burger, but instead we do a, an all Angus short rib blend burger. So it's a much better burger and it's priced on our menu the same as you would find just a normal everyday burger at a a normal place you know what i mean but it's a much much better burger so could we make more money by relaxing on on our quality sure but we don't want to we want to make sure that when you come in you say wow that burger was delicious that was amazing those tacos were the best i've ever had you know we we want it to be where when you're leaving there's nothing that you can get other than come to ocean 13 that's going to satisfy that craving. So what's what's your favorite thing on the menu and what's your least favorite thing on the menu? Oh, man. Be favorite honest. thing on the menu. So during the summer, uh, it's not right now because during this time of year, obviously, you can't bring in half a cow. But uh, during the summer from May to September, we have it's called the tomahawk steak. It's literally about three pounds of meat. Mm. And it's just the most amazing thing I've ever eaten in my life. And uh, I honestly can't wait for it to come back. Um, it's definitely a shareable thing. Like, it comes out on a giant plate. You know, you can two, three, four people can split this you thing. You don't want to split it. No, of course you don't want to split it. You want to pick it up by the bone. It's got a bone coming off. It's about a foot and a half long. Um, but uh, least favorite thing on the menu, man. Uh, I don't. I don't. I can't say that there's anything on on the menu that's just there to take up space. You know what I mean? There's things I can't eat on our menu. Uh, so I'm gluten free. I don't. I've, I haven't. I've been gluten free for about ten years now. Um, before you could even buy, you know, pre made gluten free bread, I was already allergy? gluten free. Are you gluten allergic? Uh, no. So I, I, uh, I went to when I was 26 years old. I was about your size. In about three months, I had gained 50 pounds out of nowhere. So I went to the doctor and come to find out I have thyroid issues, uh, which run in both sides of the family, mom and dad's side. Uh, so uh, they started me on medicine for it. And I was like, I don't like this. I don't want to take this medicine for the rest of my life. Like, I, I just can't do this. So about six months later, I was like, all right, I'm going to figure out how to take care of my body on my own through food and through exercise and all that kind of stuff. So uh, my buddy... Uh, JB, he's actually a, an officer with, with DNR. Uh, he was like, well, you know, you should do an elimination diet, you know, take out a whole bunch of stuff and slowly add it back in. And when you see what makes you feel like crap, don't eat that anymore. <laughs> makes sense. Yeah, right. Uh, so I, I did. I, I took out, I went vegetarian for about three months and then slowly added things back in. And when it came to adding bread back in, I actually, uh, I got a sub or something. I don't remember exactly what it was. And I took a few bites and I just instantly felt like garbage. And I was like, oh, it might just be because I, you know, a big meal with like a whole bunch of different carbs. ingredients yeah. and carbs and like just all the nastiness that this giant sub was. So I was like, okay, you know, I, I quit eating it. I felt like I was going to throw up and just felt very weird. And so about a week later, I was like, all right, let's give this another shot. Let's try to add wheat back in. Again, few bites in, just started feeling like crap. Dizzy, felt like I was going to throw up. And that's when I was like, okay, so wheat's the, the thing that's got to go. So I got rid of it and come to find out. At that time, they didn't even know that wheat was inflammatory, especially if you have a thyroid problem. So I have an underactive thyroid. So gluten was actually making my body more inflamed. It was... I don't know, whatever chemical processes there are that that reaction happens. Um, so I just decided, like, you know, every now and again, I'll have, you know, a beer or I'll go out to sushi and have soy sauce. And both things have some wheat in them. But you'll never, ever see me bite a piece of bread or a piece of pizza, like anything like that, because it's just not worth feeling like crap for the next, you know, half hour, 45 minutes. That's some minutes. strong will, man, because, you know, pizza's good. And I mean, I've had... I've, oh, trust I've, me. I've, I've uh, I eat, lived off of it. I've <laughs> eaten clean for so long. It's like, I, I, I do have those moments where I'm like, I can't do it. You can't, you can't bring fried chicken in front of me. <laughs> I have to get out of the house. Like, Well, see, until this point, I was lucky. I mean, 
uh, and I mean, I, I had a six pack till I was 27 years old or w whenever it had 26, 27. Uh, you know, I, I couldn't eat to gain weight. Like I couldn't eat enough food possibly to gain anything. And then all of a sudden it just all went down. And not that I ate bad at that point in time, because I didn't, I've always been kind of health guy, as you know, you see me at the gym killing myself all the time. Um, but, uh, yeah, it just kind of threw me for a loop, you know, definitely a, when a, it all caught up a mental thing too. Cause I mean, I deal with a kind of like body dysmorphia type thing. Like you see me go in there doing twice a day, three a oh, days, yeah. like, you know, killing it. And then I'm starting to realize like my legs, like even I'll do in like 1400 burning cardios and stuff like my legs, like it, it feels like you can't even support the weight of my own body sometimes. And it's like even getting out of bed, like right now my legs messed up. It hurts to walk because I did a hard cardio session yesterday. Like it's just, it's, there's mental blocks in there, but I'm trying not to kill myself by being at the gym any longer for two hours anymore. I'm trying, I went from being there three hours to two and a half hours to two hours to like cutting it down to just eating a couple hours before I go and then working out and then you actually strength training, not doing as much cardio, maybe incorporate a cardio day or something. Yeah. But not killing myself. Cause I'm like six years of going every single day, man, not missing a day. It's like, it, it gets tedious and I'm not going to lie to you about it too, but it's just, you know, I was, I, I was scarred emotionally when it came to bullying and you know, getting over that, it's like I've been getting into podcasting and everyone kind of asks me about podcasting. I always give them the same answer. Like, you're interesting whether you know it or not. You know, there's just certain things about you. There's I've interviewed uh, Chuck for my podcast, you know, you know Chuck uh, Gokenauer, um, one of the personal trainers at the gym that we used to own Furious Fitness. Yep, like yep. he told me he got into bodybuilding because he used to draw superheroes and um, he just he was obsessed with like their the superhero look and he was like yeah. i want to do that and i want to be like that and then he became a superhero like basically bodybuilding and it's like we talk about emotional blocks like how someone can look at themselves and see a perceptive reality i mean i've podcasted with transgender people that deal with looking at themselves and seeing a different gender it's like uh, the the mind has so many emotional blocks dude like I've, I've come to real emotional points with people in my podcasts and it's like seeing that and trying to be introvert for so long, just caring about like working on myself, improving myself and killing myself at the gym because of how I was picked on. Like, it's a big thing that a lot of people don't focus on. And a lot of people are like, well, how do you become such a positive kid without any like drug habits or any like, I don't go and drink even though I'm 21. I haven't even ordered my first legal alcoholic beverage yet. Like, no. I, I just, it, it, there's, it's just not in my realm. It's not something I'm interested in. I don't mind drinking. I don't have a problem with it, but I, I see it as calories. So it's like, that's a good way that my dis, disorder kind of works for me where I see it like that. It makes me not want to become an alcoholic. I save money. And you know, it goes to better, bigger and better things. But when I started podcasting, like I can't, I can read a book pretty well, but I don't like to read. But hearing somebody's story, everyone's a story. This is the story of me of Jeremy Brink. You know, you're telling me your life, what your passions are, what your things are, your emotions are, everything like that. I've had friends tell me my podcast like a, it's a fortune cookie. We always get down to the mystery inside, whether it's just a mystery about life or whether we're just shooting the shit. Like yeah. the only way I can explain this podcast to anybody is you're talking to Robbie. And if you haven't met me, it's you're missing out because you want to meet me. Whether you think it's a good thing or bad thing, anybody describes me as you're talking to Robbie. So you just got to take it where it stands. I'll say something that'll blow your mind or I'll say something that'll leave you like, why the fuck did you just say that? Like, <laughs> it's it's good to, it's good to hit all bases, and I'm 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 glad like you, you even took the time to first of all be on it because I remember telling you about it, and you know you're someone I thought about it when I first started the industry. I had a few couple people that kind of pushed me into it. They're like, dude, you you're good at talking. You might as well talk. And then I yeah. found this passion with it, and it's getting me out of the gym a little bit. And it's like, it's fun because you, you hear stories that people have and certain life things, and eventually I want to have everybody on again. But it, it's like, it, it's just, I'm out there to hear everyone's story because everyone's got a tale. And you should be yeah, surprised absolutely. about how many times, like, I open up people's eyes to how interesting their life really is. Because you do have an interesting life, man, whether you think it or not, you know. The experiences you had through, if you think about all the good times and bad times and just the times that stick in your head. We all know there's certain memories that pop in and get us through the day. Oh, yeah. And, uh... Yeah. 
you've really like i mean you've always been nice to me and kind to me and i appreciate that more than anything being able to even get five minutes with you was something i, I needed to do yeah no you're a great kid and you know even even at the gym you know every now and again you pop your head over and you know shoot the shit with me just yeah, you man. know and we were watching you kill it you know you were doing your thing in there it was awesome and obviously i've known your mom and dad uh, i've known your dad a lot longer than i've known your mom but i've known both of them for years and years now that's, that's where it's like the hardest thing to get in trouble around this town it's like yeah everyone knows my parents yeah so like i'll tell your dad like, all right, all right. <laughs> i would imagine it'd be worse to tell your mom oh no she'd probably have a cow bigger than my dad yeah probably. that's what i'm saying yeah. <laughs> uh yeah, I, have, I actually haven't seen your dad in quite some time. He's out in Virginia now. I, I heard. Yeah, I, I still follow him on the, the social media when, when I see him post stuff. But, uh, yeah, no, I was, I was friends with your dad for a long, long, long time. He actually got me into radio. He, he's the one that put me on the Jack FM and then hired me at 93.5 The Beach I and still all that stuff. still don't know the whole Flytrap story. I actually found one of his old notebooks with all his scribblings for Flytrap, um, his old band or whatever it was mm. with my Uncle Trez. And I'm like reading it i'm like he thought this way it's the weirdest thing in the world because i'm like <laughs> he told me back in the day he would tell me when i get older what fly trap was and then we never got talking about it and just i hear people like what are they going to do a reunion i'm like <laughs> i just know my dad is the kiss guy not this giant thing but. dude you, your dad's just a, a rock and roll man through and through like uh, i've always loved your dad he's just he's always been just such a good time you know he just was always like loves music and if you're somebody like me that loves music and you find somebody else that's like in love with music. And, and your dad was always like, yeah, I'm, I'm out DJing, you know, like I'm playing music, you know, and I do the same thing, play music that I don't necessarily listen to at home. But if it makes everybody else happy, I'm happy because it's music and it's just having a good time. So you understand music how I understand music, where it's a creative art form. So I don't really I don't when someone asks me, what's your least favorite type of music? What's your favorite type of music? I don't I have a preference for maybe some type of music I like I like to listen to on my own, but I don't hate any types of music. Yeah. I see all works of art as works of art. When you look at a painting, you're looking at a piece of art that someone created out of their mind. Now, if it's just a dot on a canvas, it really just shows how far that person went to in visualize or make you feel a certain way over their painting uh, what do you visualize in a painting have you ever taken the time to enjoy a symphony or enjoy something like that i never took the time to now when i go to thrift stores i'll buy any cd i'll buy a beethoven cd just for the heck of it yep. start playing a beethoven cd and like you know you don't understand that you're sitting at a red light next thing you know is dun 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 you're like oh my god like this is so different like it's just it's cool because you're you're influencing yourself with modern different times of culture and you know there's been great times through everything in history you know and creativity is something that is limitless and it's just so inspirational to see what someone's ideas can become no. so, and first of all not even just that just the fact that you had a thought of making a restaurant with your friends or something and then you're able to go chase that down and first of all take the steps and everything you did to get there you know, you took your steps and your Nikes and you got there. Yep. And it's like, it's just, it's just crazy to think how someone could really throw fire into their passion and chase after it. And I just got, I'm captured by it, man. Yeah. And you have to go after something you love, you know, like right now you're doing the podcasting, like, where is this going to go to? We don't know. You just started doing it recently. You know what I mean? Like this could end up, you know, you could keep doing podcasts. You could start doing like a, a web thing where you actually record the pro podcast. Well, eventually and, I'm oh, you could end video. up on the radio. I mean, you, you got some pretty good connections from what I understand. Yeah. My yeah. dad, well, when I first started, my dad's like, hey, you know, I can give you your own radio thing. And I was like, I, I want to do this on my own. You know what I mean? Like, it's nice to have help. You obviously, you know, sometimes never reject the hand that help to help. Oh, absolutely. But I'm like, at the same time. I never went around using my parents' name for anything. I never said, hey, I'm Skip's kid. Hey, I'm Marla's kid. Unless, you know, I already knew the person. They knew me from that. And I was just like, oh, like I was telling people here, I was like, I'm meeting Jeremy here. And they're like, how do you know Jeremy? I'm like, well, he knows my mom and dad. And they're like, oh, okay, Marla and Skip. And it's like, all right, you already know. It's like, but the whole idea of, I didn't use their name for anything. My, you know, some people use it for like, use their parents' name or something to get like their band in a gig or something like that. And no, I'm just for like, sure. I'm like, no, I'm like, I, I, I'm I, Robbie. Um, I would like you to know me as Robbie. And then later you find out down the road, like Bonnie and all them didn't find out my dad was Skip and Marla until later down the um, road. And I was like, hey, you met me as Robbie, though. And yeah. You, you know yeah. me as Robbie now. You don't know me as that Skip's kid. That's Marla's kid. I didn't want to be known as that. It's not a bad thing. 
No, like, definitely not. You want to make a name for yourself. And like my podcast, I don't care if it gets super popular. I would like it to be popular. I would like to interview as many possible. I would like you to be able to talk about your experience on it to other people and then try and get me other people to interview. I'm out there to interview everyone, whether I know it or not, because everyone's got a crazy story. Frank, I met that at the gym. I don't know if you know Frank. He's an older guy. He usually walks on the treadmill. I didn't uh, get along with him at first, but he's a Mormon that bakes bread at bad monkey and also owns his own stained glass thing and has created stained glass that is beautiful in his house and i'm trying to podcast with him man and he's an older guy he's like i got you know he always asks me how i'm doing now we got along we got back on the right foot and stuff like that he was just upset one time and you know when you're trying to work out and you're trying to get stuff done someone's on a machine that you want to use you're like how long you be done you know oh you yeah i'm that guy uh, i've been there but um, it's, it, you know, it was it was a it was a little scenario that we got over, and it was like a whole thing. Like now he's willing to do the podcast. He just got to set up a day for it. And I understand it's it's hard to really find an hour out of the day when everyone's got so many outlets. Yeah, but you know the cool things. thing is like a, you know, you and I were going back and forth. Like when are we actually going to be able to get together and do this? Um, and you know, if I'm not out playing music somewhere, I'm here at Ocean Thirteen. So you know, it, it, it was hard. So that's why last night when I asked you, hey, are you mobile? And you're like, yeah, man. So yeah. now here we are sitting in an office in my restaurant having a podcast, which is perfect. Phones now, going I, off and stuff. I love the idea. I that, love it, dude. Well, I love like, the idea you said about doing it at restaurants, like go to different yeah. places and have it be in a very casual setting. You know, you'd have to figure out how to, you know, probably do some lapel mics or whatever to make sure you're not picking up only background noise. But the fact that you That's have started, background noise mics. in it would be awesome. That's like, how I started was lapel mics. Well, if you look, I have one of my podcasts called Bingo Night. It's right after I did a podcast with um, uh, Brandon Paul uh, Magellan. Yeah, and um, the day after that, that night was the night before Stevie J came on the podcast. So it's me, Stevie J, and Brandon all sitting there having um, a meal at Whiskers after Bingo Night, and it's like we're sitting there. You hear chairs moving around in the background, then some some like transvestites walked in the door oh. and we're like cracking jokes on them like we were going from talking about eating this burger making fun of stevie j's shirt and it's on the podcast you know everyone's enjoying food brandon's scratching off tickets i'm making fun of him about scratch offs he wins 50 dollars. i look like an asshole and then he goes and buys more scratch offs but it's like that whole aspect man like it's those conversations you get at those random times that are formative moments and stuff you don't remember exactly what was said but you remember you had that conversation with that person. Remember the experience, and yeah. that's what it, that's what life's about, man. Um, you know, uh, I'm very much the, um, you know, obviously my son wants a new bike. I'm going to buy him a new bike. But I'm also the dad that wants to take him to experience things. So he just started liking going to concerts last year. He wouldn't go before that. And so now, like, I look around for concerts that he'd like so I can take him to it. Because what's he going to remember? You know, oh, my dad bought me this bike or my dad brought me to see Aerosmith or you know what I mean like he's gonna remember all those things so it's it's all about experiences in life you know obviously my experiences with my family doing this led to me owning a restaurant and you, you never know you know taking him to these concerts could lead to him you know doing something with music which he's gotten super into in the last year I saw, I've seen pictures on Facebook oh, he, he's already a better guitar player than me it's not it's not even fair I did not pick up the instrument craft sadly I picked up I think more of the vocal being able to talk a little bit but I, you know I don't mind it I, I, I was I, well I'd have to say though I think if you gave it a a real real world I think you'd surprise yourself because you've got two very talented parents and typically that doesn't skip a generation uh I think that if you were to sit in a room alone with a couple musical instruments, I, just have to get into I would think within a month or two, you'd be like, oh, oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I could, I, I could probably learn this. I think because the way I've been trying to be taught, you can only learn something through your own process. And I mean, your own experience. Well, you have to love it. But you know, you have to. At the same time, like if it's somebody's teaching you how they play and how they do something, how they form the notes together, how they see things, you're gonna try and do it that way, and that might not fit you. Maybe if I saw it in a different way, like playing it's like this, and if you try and connect it to this, bam, like math. I wasn't good at math, and then someone connected it to the gym. You have for 45 plate on one side and 45 plate on the other, and the bar is 45 pounds. What are you doing? And it's like, that made math very, very simple for me. And that's how I passed my statistics class. And it's like, bam, it's like being able to connect things with stuff you can relate to and being able to experience is something that you really need in life to kind of be able to understand the world mm -hmm. and understand how people work. 
we've had to experience assholes, we've had to experience good people, and we know how people work. But it yep. doesn't mean that that just give, that doesn't give you any idea that people are all bad. It just gives you the idea that certain people are like how they are because of certain things that have happened in their life that have brought them to that point. Absolutely. Now, so they not might be mad at you. They might be mad about something earlier in the day, and they're just taking it out on you. So you got to learn to hold yourself still until they realize what they're doing and then back themselves away. And especially when you own a restaurant, if a guy's just talking crap on your restaurant or something, hopefully not, but you gotta learn to bite your tongue big. Sorry, sir, you didn't have good service. I welcome you back next time. He Absolutely. comes back next time. Look, man, I was an asshole. I'm sorry about this in your restaurant. It's a beautiful place. I really love what you're doing. You create a wonderful vibe for me and my family. And you're like, thank you. And that, that leaves you feeling well. That leaves you feeling good. And now that man knows like, Hey, that owner is not an asshole. Hey, that owner actually cares about the people that come to him. Yep. And that's something you definitely got to invoke. And I know that's got to be a big thing for your son to see too when you're trying to create that vibe too. Oh, absolutely. Yep. Well, yeah. I mean, it's 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 it was a, it was a lot, dude. I and mean, you you definitely changed my mind and interest me on some things for sure about a podcast. I know you got a meeting coming up. Yeah, and, unfortunately. Um, I got four meetings today. Well, that's Dude, I half my life you. is sitting in meetings <laughs> i appreciate you taking the time and even being on the podcast because you know i felt like i connected with you to a whole nother level we really never got a chance to in the gym just with those little short talks yeah but it's it was cool to sit down with you and i appreciate you being on the podcast i'm happy to get you on uh one day maybe when you're free in the summertime i know you're probably taking your son to that jellyfish music festival um yeah i mean uh, hopefully you know it depends you know that that time of year is uh so, like I said, my son's homeschooled. So between May, middle of May, middle of September, you know, we still hang out and do a lot of things together. But I work, you know, a hundred or more hours a week. Yes, yeah, so it's, it's all I do. Time in. Um, so actually going and doing something is harder. But then I I take the off season. I take the the middle of September through. Uh, so him and I go to the Outer Banks every year at the end of September. We always have and we always will. Um, that kind of kicks off our let's make up for how busy I was in the summertime. Uh, and then we, we do things all winter. You know, we, we go, and like I said, we go to concerts and we'll go out of town. We're going back to Hawaii in January. Um, I like to give him the experiences because unfortunately the experiences that ocean city has to offer. I'm so busy during the summertime. We don't get to enjoy them, but uh, no, I mean the jellyfish festival. I mean, it did, it, it's looking like it's really starting to come together and shape up. I think it's going to be a pretty cool, uh, event and uh for sure if, if i can sneak down there and see some motocross i'm definitely going to out of all the places you visited what types of foods have you really experienced i've had haitian food before and i never thought i would like it but it's really good goat snack and all that oh, I yeah. it was uh, uh, all kinds of stuff man like uh you know we used to vacation in maine every year for a few years and uh you know lobster rolls are everywhere mm. i'd never even heard of a lobster roll before we went up there Le and Le let me tell you what oh Lace chips. They made a lobster roll flavor for Maine. Each they have a, a or not, not, is it lace or Doritos? But they have a specific flavor for each state. Oh, that's a, I didn't like even know. Maryland that. is uh, crab crab something. Yeah, but it's crazy. You got to look at all these states like uh, Arkansas, or Kansas is like corn something like corn beef and hash or something. It's yeah. really crazy, <laughs> but it's it's funny, dude, that you get to experience these types of things, and that's the best part about traveling, man. I think besides seeing the different culture. Just looking at the buildings and just different aspects that create a different vibe. It's yeah. the main reason why I want to get out of Ocean City because I've experienced this my whole life. I'm ready to experience a whole yeah, new realm. Man, travel. And there, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, if you have a good life here, why do you need to travel? No, that that's completely wrong. You should want to travel. You should want to experience. There's a lot more that the world has to offer than anywhere that you live. I mean, you can live in the most amazing. You can live in Hawaii. And there's still, I mean, there's things in Alaska that you would see and be offered to, to experience You'd never get in Hawaii. So, you know, I'm, I'm big on getting around and, and seeing things, you know, uh, even even back to the food thing. You know, we we went out to California a couple of years ago for a couple of weeks and, uh, you know, I love fish tacos. And I'll tell you what, there's nowhere outside of California that I've ever had a fish taco that I've been like, holy good Lord. Like, what was that? You know, fish tacos in California. I would jump on a plane with you tomorrow. And go to California, get a fish taco, and then come back home. They are literally that good, and you can't touch them. You can't. You can't recreate it. Uh, it's just I don't know if it's maybe something in the water or, or the what chef. it is. But uh, everywhere I went in California for fish tacos, I was just 
blown away on a whole nother level. I went to one restaurant and I remember it was, I think it was at Applebee's and it was only on this certain day of the week we went every day because on that day because it was um, the guy, uh, I think his name was Steve's, um, was my grandmom's favorite waiter. And I don't know if it was the chef that always worked that night, but every time I got this thing of nachos, it was so good. And then I remember one day I got it when we wasn't on a Tuesday and we didn't have that waiter. Nachos were crap. Sometimes it's the waiter, man, or not the waiter. Sometimes it's the chef, man. Sometimes you get a certain chef in like a mom and pop restaurant or something, not like Applebee's, but like somewhere smaller and they change up the flavor. It's like changing the whole mix and the spice of the drink. Like, Absolutely. It's like getting a different band. You know, you're all chefs on a stage creating a type of a uh, souffle. For sure. And you know, if everybody's not adding in the right spice, you're just gonna get, it's gonna taste a little funky. There it is. That's right. But uh, I, like I said, I appreciate you being on the podcast, man. And hopefully we'll get you on again soon, whenever you get a, a free day. Yeah. I understand, you know, the busy life of owning multiple businesses, but that's what makes you a uh, interesting person is you got, you know, you can't sit still like me. Yeah, no, I, I definitely, uh, I don't sit, sit still very well. Um, you know, in between the, the DJ and then, you know, my band still plays all over. We're actually at Secrets this uh, Friday. I don't know if you can tell all your your followers but we're raising money for the humane society uh it's obviously a no-kill shelter you do that for, the, for all your um i think uh performances i see that a lot you guys are doing um some type of beneficial uh, I, I do I, I try to you know even here at the restaurant I, I always try to help raise money for for various things obviously having a no-kill shelter is a little more ex- mm-hmm. expensive on their side than you know euthanizing you know putting putting animals down so they have to keep animals alive so they need shots and they need food and they need water and they need shelter yeah, it costs money it costs money so this friday we're raising money we're actually playing at secrets on the morley hall stage with my band side project uh and their you know tickets are 35 dollars, but you get food you get some discounted drinks and you get to hang out watch a really fun band play you get to hang out with a whole bunch of other people that love animals and then the next day is the board walking for pets so everybody's bringing their dogs to the boardwalk and just walking the boards with their dogs it's going to be amazing um, it's an experience that's, yeah that's so awesome. so i don't know if you can do a little type up about that get it out to your people but uh well, it, it's definitely going to be a cool this event. podcast doesn't get posted tonight it's probably gonna get posted tomorrow morning so i'll make sure when i post it up that uh everyone checks it out i sure. like that awesome you can probably share it on your facebook or something oh i will absolutely like i said it was great having you on the podcast man and thanks and Thank you for letting me into your wonderful building, even though we're sitting in the cramped little office spot. But <laughs> I, I enjoy it, man. It looks awesome. Awesome. Well, hey, I appreciate you having me, Robbie. It's good, good to work. see you, brother.